people have been observing the sun for thousands of years. Many cultures believed in a sun goddess, and they thought of the sun as the perfect object. As soon as the telescope was invented, people pointed at pretty much anything they could think of, and they discovered that the sun is actually not that perfect. They were able to see sunspots. Today, we know that the sun is very dynamic, and it has the largest eruptions in the solar system. It's important for us to be able to predict solar weather using NASA satellites to help us look inside the sun and better understand this giant violent star. Without the sun, life on Earth wouldn't exist. The sun is the big anchor that keeps our planet and the other planets in the solar system uh, in a small area of space uh, rather than just flying off into the rest of the universe. Since this is part of our everyday life, I think this is something very fundamental to mankind just to understand what we are looking at. Hi, my name is Maya Jordan and I'm a student here at Parkland Magnet Middle School in Rockville, Maryland. One of the cool things we study in astronomy class is actually the sun. And how we study it is we use the sunspotters. The sunspotters actually show you a reflection or shadow of the sun, and you trace it, and then over time we collect the papers, and we can compare them to see how the sunspots have changed and how they've moved. Sunspots are regions on the sun that are cooler than the surrounding areas in the sun's photosphere. Are you curious about the sun yet? We were. So we invited NASA scientists Sten and Daniel to come and talk with the students about the sun and help them with their calculations. Do you know how to average these numbers together? The median, the mean. The, find the mean. You add these numbers up and divide by the number of numbers. The sun is an active star that goes through regular cycles of maximum and minimum activity. The students are calculating the solar maximum and solar minimum by looking at data over the last 50 years that covers how many sunspots occurred during every decade. And, it's, and some of the really big sunspots you can easily see if you look at the sun with the naked eye. They're that big. Uh, I think these sunspots were about you know, 30 times as big as the Earth. They were just huge. Exactly how cool can sunspots be? You look at the surface of the sun, and it's about uh, 5,700 degrees Kelvin. I think the coolest sunspot goes down maybe 2,000 to 2,500 degrees cooler than that. One of the most important things is that uh, the sun is a star. It's the nearest example that we have in the entire universe of what those little points of light in the sky are that we see at night. The sun is a very dynamic star, and it changes all the time. Did you know it has the largest eruptions in all of the solar system? We call these coronal mass ejections, and they have an impact on us here on Earth. That's called solar weather. And looking at that image, do you guys have a prediction about which of those areas would be most likely to cause a, a coronal mass ejection? Yeah. Yeah. OK? Uh, one. Look over here, sir. Uh, we care about solar weather because any communication devices that rely on transmitting information continuously can be affected. High precision electronics, like electronics for high speed trains, can be affected by it. And uh, since a high speed train at 200 miles per hour is a, is a pretty dangerous thing if it just runs loose, so we want to know what's going on here. The Earth has its own way of protecting us from solar storms and solar weather. It's something called a magnetic field. You can imagine the, the Earth's magnetic field a bit like an eggshell around an egg. So without this shell, we would be fried. And what about if we were on the moon? Yeah, if you're on the moon, uh, you would be fried as well. So what you would have to do is go in your little spaceship and wait until the storm is over. Today, scientists are learning about solar weather using satellites that go around the sun. One of those satellites, SOHO, is celebrating its 10-year anniversary. European Space Agency scientist Daniel came in to tell us how the SOHO satellite is unique when compared to other satellites that use solar data. The satellite, uh, the spacecraft, contains 12 different experiments. So we collect images of the sun in different colors or different wavelengths. It is just very fascinating to look at the sun. And if you look at these images, you'll see the sun as most of us have never seen it before. 
and you realize that this is a star that is violent and uh, dynamic. Before the launch of SOHO, all we knew about space weather was from satellites in near-Earth orbit. And now we actually see the origin of stormy weather out in space. This way we get a two to three days notice for disturbances that propagate to us. And so the phrase that uh, NASA invented that we are living with a star is actually true. Since this is part of our everyday life, I think this is something very fundamental to mankind just to understand what we are looking at. Our teachers tell us every day that there are less and less scientists to discover new things. When I go to college, I am going to major in aerospace engineering and hopefully I will get a job for NASA and build spacecraft. My personal goal is I just love to instill in them curiosity. So I hope I'm raising the next generation of scientists and I hope that some people will just come out with more of a sense of wonder.